So in today's tutorial, what we're going to do is set up a server that will enable us to host our files, both our Node backend and also our front-end application as well for the Rick and Roll project. So I'm going to be using DigitalOcean uh, for this project and it's probably not the easiest way to set up the resources that we're going to be needing. Uh, there are different options that you've got such as using AWS uh, or also using Netlify which has a lot of uh, pre-configured uh, services for you. But I'm choosing this uh, for the reason that we've got full control over how we host our project. So we're going to be setting up some uh, uh, web server software, uh, the database that will hold all of the URL information, uh, but also we can uh, configure a build pipeline which deploys our files to the server in exactly the way we want. So this probably isn't the quickest or easiest way of doing things, uh, but it certainly will teach you a lot of different things. So if you do want to follow along and create a project using DigitalOcean, follow the referral link in the description below and you'll get some free credit, uh, which will enable you to set up several different servers and have an experiment and play uh, whilst creating some hobby projects. So in the DigitalOcean account, when you've actually created your account, uh, if you go over to a project that you've created, you can create a new project from here. So I've already created one for Rick and Roll here. What we want to do is create a server, which they refer to as a droplet. So if we click on this create a droplet button and we're going to host everything on one server which is sufficient for the project that we're going to be using but if you did have an app that had a uh, high usage then you might want to split these uh, services into different things but uh, let's keep things simple as we can uh, by just creating one server uh, that hosts all of our resources. So uh, we're going to use the Ubuntu operating system. Either version 20 or 18 will be fine. Make sure you select that as your option if you are following along because uh, lots of the different commands that we're going to be using are going to be a differ if you choose a different type of operating system. Uh, so from here, oh, you can choose different options. And again, we're just going to go for the really basic, simple uh, version and the cheapest option, uh, which is going to be this uh, one down here. But it does give you sufficient memory uh, storage and also a lot of bandwidth as well. So we don't really need to worry about any of those things. And if you select the regular internet with SSD, you'll get the $5 a month plan, which again will be more than sufficient for what we're going to be doing. So let's just select that uh, for our CPU options. And then you've got a choice of data centers. So again, this doesn't really matter for our project. And if we were using something like a CDN, uh, then again, this doesn't have a great impact on the performance of our app. So we don't need to worry about that too much. And the only other thing that we really need to worry about too much is the SSH key that you're going to be uh, using to connect. So you can only really, and you only really should, connect to your DigitalOcean droplet, your server, using an SSH key, because uh, it's obviously a lot more secure than just sending a password, uh, but you do have the option there to do that. But with the SSH key that we created in the previous tutorial, or if you have already an SSH key, uh, then you can add it into your account here. So just click new SSH key and copy the uh, public key into the uh, box here. Uh, as you can see, I've got several that I've already uh, got set up. So I'm just going to set, select my uh, MacBook that I'm using at the moment. And so once you've done that, you can add some tags and some more descriptive uh, text to your uh, droplet. But when you're ready to go, just click create droplet and it usually takes a few minutes just to uh, provision the server uh, and give you all of the details uh, but once you've done that you will have a server that we can start to use to actually uh, push our code to and this will be the server that's hosting everything for our project the front-end content the API and also the the database which will hold all of the URLs so we'll let that finish and then in the next tutorial we're going to start looking at uh, logging onto the server and setting up some of the resources that we're going to need for our project. But that's it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.